Hello everybody, what is going on today? We're looking at the MiU Mini Plus. Now this device has been out for a while and I'm sure if you're in the retro handheld space, you've seen this device, you're familiar with this device, or even own it because it's very cheap. This is a $50 to $60 device that can run everything up to and including PlayStation 1. Now obviously it is a Game Boy style handheld, but it lends itself perfectly to PS1 or systems like that because of its 4x3 aspect ratio, which is one of the main reasons I would prefer to play PS1 on this over even the PSP, whether it be the Go or the regular PSP, which we have right over here. And that's because, obviously, PlayStation 1 content was made for a 4x3 aspect ratio. And while it is good on the PSP, you have to either stretch it or squash it to make it fit the kind of more widescreen screen of the PSP. And because we're running Linux here, because we have Onion OS, because we are running RetroArch, we can apply some nice filters to it. So, for example, here we have Super Mario 3 running on this bad boy. Got the beautiful music there. We'll turn that down a little bit. Uh, but we, if you can see the screen here, we got a nice scan line filter on it. See, without that, I'm not going to go through all the trouble of turning it on and off and on and off again just to show you, but it looks, a lot of old games especially, even PS1 games, they're designed for CRTs. Old, what is it? CRT stands for cathode ray tube, right? I think that's the acronym. Could be wrong. But... It was designed for TVs that had scanline, which is why you get so many snobs today that be like, oh, well, you've never played these PS1 games, you know, you emulators, if you're not playing it on a CRT. And it looks better on a CRT, they are correct about that. But a nice scanline filter looks really good too, because the games were not designed for modern pixel perfect uh, TVs and monitors and things like that. It kind of makes it look... I don't want to say too good, but it, it wasn't meant to be that perfect. It was meant to be a little a little warbly, and that's kind of the charm, especially with PS1 games. Things are a little warbly, a little a little goofy, a little wacky, a little everything's kinda of like like a like a mush all over the place. You don't really know what's going on or what you're looking at. Um, but that's part of the charm, the the graphical charm of the early uh, whether it be 2D days with something like the NES, or early 3D days with something like the PlayStation 1. Now to be quick about what I like and what I don't like about this device and why you should maybe consider it or not depending on what you like. Again, this is a device that is running Linux. It's not an Android based device. You can get Onion OS, you can get RetroArch and all that fun stuff on here if you're used to those things. There's absolutely no problem with that. Uh, but it might be different from what you're used to if you're used to dealing with Android or Windows devices for emulation. Or even something like the Steam Deck running Emu Deck, which is Linux, but Emu Deck's going to be a bit different than this. Nonetheless, it is easy to set up if you follow the instructions or you go online if you can't figure something out. Very, very easy to set up. Don't let that deter you if you're not used to Linux. But just when you get this, don't expect it to be like a Retroid Pocket, right? Where you just go on the browser, on the device itself, get your ROMs, get your BIOSes, all on the system itself. This device does have Wi-Fi. But it's for multiplayer. It's for playing games together. It's not for browsing, for downloading, or any stuff like that. And it's it, it's a cheap device. It wouldn't be able to do that well anyway. But we said this device can run everything up to PS1 and including PS1. There are some PS1 games, like one of my favorites here, Tai Fu Wrath the Tiger, if you can see that. It doesn't run. It will it runs well the parts that will run, but it doesn't work. And that's, at first I thought it was because this device wasn't powerful enough. But it's actually because it just doesn't run well in any PlayStation 1 emulation. If you want to play those kind of games that you have looked up and you know don't run well in emulation, play those in something like the PSP Go or a regular PSP, because there's eBoot files available of those games and they will run just fine on the PSP. So... You're getting everything up to PS1. Again, a few fringe PS1 games are not going to run well. Um, but for the most part, everything is going to run well on this device. Let's launch into one of my 
other favorite tier, Crash Team Racing, always a fun one. Let's see if we can get to a race here. Uh, another thing is we have a nice pause resume feature here because of RetroArch, because of the Onion OS. We can hold this button or press it. If we press it, it'll bring us up a menu where we can select between the various games that we have suspended. A similar feature to what we have on the PSP Go, although that's only with one game. And this you can do it with uh, too many, it looks like. <laughs> I have like eight suspended, and I, I don't know if that affects the performance, but it doesn't seem to. And this is where we would also be able to change the brightness. So we have to press press down on that to change the brightness. Now we can't do that in game, but that makes sense. So we can go right back into the game from there. You see all the stuff we have running, and the beautiful screen, of course, is four by three aspect ratio. So stuff like PlayStation looks beautiful on it, right? I don't know what I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, are you, you guys remember that? And we're used to X now being you know, on PlayStation at least. X being, you know, accept and circle being back. But I, when you go back to old PlayStation games, right? Triangle is back in most games, so that takes some getting uh, used to for sure. Let's see if we can just get into a little gameplay here real quick. Every every game I've tested except the one I mentioned there, Typhoon ran flawlessly. Didn't have any issues with it. Any issues launching, loading, or running the game at full speed. There was actually some uh, Sega Gen Genesis games that I played that did have some slowdown, but they they kind of worked themselves out after playing for a little while. So I don't know if that was just like shader cache stuff or or what exactly. But I haven't. I've yet to run into anything on the systems this device is capable of running that didn't work because the hardware couldn't handle it. Right. So right from there, if something happens, obviously we can pause the game. We can press that, switch over to another game we are playing, keep that suspended if we so desire, or we can just hold the button and go back to the game or back to the menu itself when you hear that kind of click. So if you're really interested in emulating everything up to and including PS1, this is a really awesome device. It's, it's small, it's pocketable. This is an actual pocketable handheld, like the PSP Go here. It's pocketable. It's a little thick, but it is pocketable. And it's just fun, right? The, this form factor is just a fun form factor. It's nostalgic. It's cool to be able to play PS1 games on the go. I know we've been able to do that for a while. But doing it in like this form factor and something that slides into your pocket with a screen this nice that is 4x3 aspect ratio, it's really cool. And I like these older games for kind of, you know, jumping in to play. Like you're playing Crash Team Racing, Crash Bandicoot, Tetris, Ridge Racer, Tekken 3 uh, on PlayStation, Super Mario 3 or Super Mario World, World 2, Contra, whatever. They're games you can just jump in and play, right? Whereas a lot of PS2 games or GameCube games on more expensive emulators, I don't know if I'd really want to play them on the go unless you're on like a really long bus ride or plane ride or something. Otherwise, I'd probably just want to play them at home, like blown up to like 8K on my computer, you know, and then send it to the TV. But I think this device emulates everything I would want it to. Could it be more powerful and emulate some, uh, you know, N64 stuff? Would that be nice? Yeah. Uh, it would be nice, but I think within a year we'll have a device like that that is this price, this form factor, this kind of, uh, I wouldn't say quality is not the word, because this isn't a quality device, but it is a quality device for the price point. But a device that is this capable, this um, competent, I think is the word I'm looking for, that can run that stuff. I think with, within, a, within a year from Mio or whoever, even though there are other already devices that do this, we'll have something like this from them specifically that will be able to do N64. And if you if you want to go bigger, of course, there are Anbernic devices. I think there's a 405V, which is the same aspect ratio, 4x3, but it can run even GameCube stuff. 
But that's getting a little weird because then you got two giant thumb sticks down here that are sticking way out, right? Way out. And way off the kind of level surface of the device. And that makes it hard to pocket. You'd have to buy a case for it at that point. But yeah, that's what I think about this device. I think it's really worth the price point. It looks good. It's fun to use. The buttons are actually, the buttons and the screen are surprisingly nice. And it just does what it says it'll do. Now, if Linux bothers you, or if, you know, the, the cheaper kind of Chinese knockoff brands bother you, or if you're afraid of, you know, importing it or whatever, maybe skip the device. But if this is something you can get, and if you're not worried about uh, tinkering for a couple seconds uh, with, a, with a Linux operating system or putting Onion OS on it, I think you're going to really enjoy this device. And despite it being so cheap, it feels good. It's it's a fun device to use, and even though it uh, it looks good, and you you know, like with any tech, you don't want to damage it or anything. It's nice to remember this device is fifty bucks. You can you can toss it in your backpack. Like it'll be okay. And if it's not, you know, <laughs> hopefully if you're buying devices like this, fifty dollars isn't a lot to you, and you can afford to beat it up a little bit, right? Much more than I would, you know, want to take the PSP Go out and accidentally beat it up because that is like a two hundred plus dollar device at this point, and it's probably only going to get more expensive as time goes on. Whereas this, throw it in your pocket, it'll fit. Throw it in your bag, it'll fit. Throw it wherever, it'll fit. Maybe you'll scratch the screen, maybe you'll do this, maybe you'll do that, but it it, it it'll hold up and it'll be fine. By the time you want to buy a new one, you know, it'll still be there. So that's what I have to say about the Miu Mini Plus. Let me know what you guys think about this device. What would make it perfect for you? What would make this device perfect for you? Is it the ability to play N64 planes, you know, Super Mario 64 on this bad boy? Would you like it to have thumbsticks? And if you did, would you want them to be like the Ambernic one, where it's like not flush with the system? Or would you more want it to be like the Retroid Pocket, where it's, it's kind of like 3DS style, almost flush with the system? I personally don't like those, but it might be better to have them than not uh, for a device that's maybe more capable. Or maybe, you know, an Android-based one where you can play stuff like Call of Duty Mobile or Genshin Impact. Let me know what you think about this device, what you prefer about it, what you prefer about other brands, and what your dream handheld might be. Like, do you care? Are you like me? Do you care? Or do you not care, really? If devices can emulate GameCube and PS2 and PS3 and stuff like that, do you really want to play stuff like that on the go? Uh, and if you do, how much are you willing to tinker with it? Let me know what you guys think about that kind of stuff. I thank you for watching. Thank you for being here, for uh, enjoying the content, hopefully. Please like, share, and subscribe if you do like the content. And so then we can keep making more, keep getting new fun handhelds, new fun devices, new fun games, and talking about them. Anyway, thank you all for watching. We will see you all next time.